I've got a cool new video for y'all today. Um, this is going to be a review and kind of an overlook of the new Jet uh, JWS-22B uh, scroll saw. Uh, B referring to, I think this just when they model it out, the B stands for the stand, so it's the JWS-22. So uh, it is a 22-inch scroll saw, meaning it's about 22 inches from the blade all the way back to that back post, um, and measuring it, it's slightly over uh, 22 inches. The jet scroll saw is not a unique design in the sense that a couple other companies have made scroll saws very similar to this and a lot of people that know scroll saws know that it looks very similar to the Excalibur saws. Um, one being the way the table tilts or actually the lack thereof. And so I'm going to move my camera here and kind of show you first off of how the saw tilts and that's what kind of makes this particular design unique. So the table actually stays perfectly flat and the head of the saw tilts. So I'm loosening this guy up here down here and then just rotating this back and forward. And then just tightening that back down when you are ready to cut. Uh, the advantage to this is you have a perfectly flat work surface and then just the blade itself tilts versus some of the other saws like the DeWalt. The uh, table itself tilts and the top stays flat. So one thing starting off with it is infinitely unique with the jet saw is the upper and lower clamping mechanism. So real quick, I'll kind of show you how the upper clamp mechanism works. So with your typical uh, scroll saw, you would have a knob to tighten the blade or to lock it in, and then your top lever would flip to actually put tension on this. Well, Jet's designed something to kind of do this all in one, you know, one stroke. So if you can kind of see, there's a space there your blade flips right in there. There's two little pins on either side which are adjustable. To set, you know, if it's centered or how tight it is. And then you just flip it up. And it tightens your blade. So pretty cool. Um, I know some people on the scroll saw forums, you know, they're still kind of up in the air about it. So far, I'm really liking it. Now, talking about the, bl the, the lower blade mechanism, this is the lower blade mechanism, which I've taken off. Um, it's unique also in the sense that you have these barrels that you put your blade in and then they clip into this holder here. And I believe the saw comes with a set of three. So you've got these. These are adjustable as well. You got an Allen screw on one side that centers it in the hole and then this tightens down. Once it's tightened down and in the holder like this, this would normally 
I'll do this one handed here. Push right down in here. You flip it down like that. And then you would clamp it in the top holder here. Now, some people love or hate this as well because then you have to mount all of your blades in holders like this. And so you're only provided with three. Now these slots here are to hold blades that have been pre-mounted, so you can mount up a number of blades and then just kind of set them in these holders here. But one interesting feature that I didn't particularly like on the saw and was a little concerned about is if you'll notice on some of these blades and see if I can get it to focus. Oh, this is really tiny here. Is you have an upcut. So normally you have your down teeth. And actually this blade is mounted upside down. Um, I wasn't paying attention. So you have six sets of teeth, or two or three sets of teeth, six total teeth, um, mounted up on your upstroke. And then you have your down teeth. What this does is it helps you eliminate tear out on the bottom piece of your wood. Well, the way this saw was designed, because this blade holder is in such a way that it sits a little bit lower, these bottom teeth don't engage above the table. And so they're really ineffective at all. So this relegates a lot of people to either using a different type of blade or not having the benefit of those upstroke teeth at all. The Flying Dutchman Ultra Reverse blades actually work great because they have every, you know, fourth or fifth tooth, I'm guessing, um, is going the opposite direction. So it's not just the bottom few teeth. Now, I posted this question on the Scroll Saw forum when I first got the saw, asking if I was doing something wrong because these teeth weren't engaging. And they said, no, that's, you know, a slight you know, knock on the saw that they don't work like that. Well, one possible solution was that is to upgrade the lower clamping mechanism to a brand called Pegasus. Um, Pegasus makes replacement upper and lower uh, blade clamps for a number of different saws, and so people have been using them for a number of years. Uh, since this saw is brand new, not many people have upgraded the clamps on this particular saw. I went ahead and ordered it from a recommendation on the scroll saw form to try it, and so, this is what the upgraded holder looks like. It eliminates the barrel and is just your typical clamp. Once I mounted it, um, I was able to put the traditional blade back in. And because this clamp is actually set a lot higher than the old one, the upstroke teeth actually do engage above the, te uh, the table. Now, not all of the teeth engage, about two to three teeth engage, but that's better than none. Now, if you're using the Flying Dutchman Ultra Reverse Tooth Blade, you really don't have that problem at all. And if you just stick to using those blades, you may not necessarily want to replace the lower holder. Um, I went ahead and did, and I really like it so far. One other thing that kind of got me thinking is because this particular type of holder isn't locked down in this clamp here. And let me demonstrate. All it is is basically a spring in here that's holding it in. And so when I installed the new holder down below the table, I noticed that it cut a little bit better and it could be just my imagination too. But I got me to thinking this blade, this blade holder can still rotate in that holder when in use. And if it has the ability to rotate just ever so slightly, it can deflect the bottom of your blade and causing it not to cut maybe quite as true or tend to make the blade wander just a little bit more. 
Now, like I said, this could just be my imagination, but um, I did find that, you know, installing the new holder did make the saw work quite well. Now, jumping back to the table adjustment, one thing I forgot to mention is you have preset indentations to lock your table. So straight at zero, you have a little button that you can just push, and when it locks into that hole, your table is set. Also, they built in a, a, um, a slot here, so if it's not straight from the factory, you can adjust this plate, and so your presets will be perfect each time. Also included with the saw is a dust collection port, which can slide in and out. So if you don't want this, this piece will just slide out and you don't have to use it. Works very well. I almost find that it uh, provides a little bit too much suction and my piece actually super glues itself to the table because of the amount of suction. I would have liked to have seen a smaller uh, throat hole here just for doing really small pieces they tend to fall in here so I may make myself just a little zero clearance insert um, but overall it works well you have the rear arm adjustment here also you can adjust the pitch of your bottom blade by loosening these screws and then twisting the motor now this particular type of saw is going to be a bottom feeder because the bottom of the blade is held in and the top is used by this clamp so top feeders may not like this. Now Pegasus does make a replacement top clamping mechanism which is like the traditional ones you would see on the Excalibur saws um, which makes it so you can do top feeding. Uh, the bottom blade holder was about 40 bucks, and the top one, I believe, is about the same. Don't quote me on the price. Uh, right now, I'm just going to leave the top on. I like it. Um, if I find that I um, just don't like bottom feeding anymore, I may go ahead and replace the top, and I'll make another video on how I like that. But so far, it has been a really great saw. It's quick and easy to use. Clamp works good. And the saw. Just quiet with virtually no vibration. Here's a look at the blades that I've got for it in the Flying Dutchman Ultra Reverse. So it's two teeth down, one tooth up. Great blades, I'm still playing with them, but so far I've really enjoyed them. Also, I forgot to mention this is a blower. The blower does work quite well. It does a great job of clearing the workspace of dust, and actually the dust collection does work good. So if you have any more questions or I didn't cover anything, one thing I forgot to mention is the holder on this side. You can buy one for the other side, so you have holders on both sides. The holder runs about $50, I called Jet. Um, so you've got you know, the ability to hold four tubes. And then you can get one for the other side as well. Nice heavy duty stand and I went and installed just a base on the inside so I can have some storage in there. If I left anything out, just uh, message me in the comments. But I try to do really practical reviews and answer questions that, you know, maybe somebody who, you know, was sponsored by a tool company or you know, works for Jet or some, you know, professional tool store may not give an unbiased opinion about the saw. Overall, I really like the saw and the little 
tweak that I made, I really think is going to make the saw work much better. Right out of the box, it's a great saw. Um, do I think that you have to upgrade the bottom or the top levers? Absolutely not. But I do like the ability to be able to use those uh, upcut teeth now, whereas before I didn't unless I was using these Flying Dutchman blades. Thanks guys, and I hope you enjoy the review.